Okay, a dedicated outside air unit is used to pre-cool 2,500 CFM of outside air at these conditions, uh, in a relative, relative humidity of these conditions. What is the quantity of water removed in the coil in GPM? And the question is, I'm not sure what's going on in this problem. I was hoping you could shed some light. I used 4840 CFM delta humidity ratio equals 500 GPM delta T, but apparently I get an answer of 13.46 GPM. The solution ignores the water heat gain equation and opts to convert the mass flow of water. Well, my question to you would be, why are we using 500 GPM delta T? Why are we interested in the heat gain? Really, to answer the question of what's the quantity of water being removed, do we have to get involved in what the heat gain is? So we have these fully defined states. We can find out the humidity ratio for both. So I'm not going to do the whole problem out here, but suffice it to say that you know how to use the psychrometric chart to find the uh, humidity ratio and the specific volume at state one. So you can go away and get humidity ratio at one and specific volume at one, and then fully defined state two as well. So you can get the humidity ratio at two. So suppose you've done that. Now we have air flowing over a coil. We can, um, right, the formula that I think is needs to be used here, and I won't say memorize because I don't like to use that word. It's like a bad word in my, I think you should internalize and I think it's inevitable that you're gonna remember some things. And this is one of the things that I expect you to encounter enough that you will end up memorizing it without really even trying. And if you haven't by this point, that's fine. But take this opportunity now to note this equation. This is saying that the mass flow rate of water or water vapor is equal to the mass flow rate of air times the delta of the humidity ratio. And this could be in the case of dehumidifying by um, what's happening here. We're running air over a coil, we're cooling it past its dew point, and we're stripping moisture out of that air so we can calculate how much condensate's being removed. Uh, it would also be true if we were adding moisture to air, if we were running a humidifier, then um, we could have the humidity ratio go in the other direction. And uh, by the same, the same token, we could find the mass flow rate of water being added to the air. And in terms of like a derivation for this, I, I won't really offer one, but I'll say it's almost definitional, right? W what is a humidity ratio? It has units of pounds of water divided by pounds of dry air. So if we have a difference in humidity ratio, it's gonna have those units. Couldn't we say some mass of water divided by some mass of air would give us pounds of water over pounds of air? And could we make those a rate? Could we make it pounds of water per unit time divided by pounds of air per unit time? Certainly. And it would still have units of pounds of water per pounds of dry air. So if you divide mass flow rate of air to the other side, then you get mass flow rate of water over mass flow rate of air equals the difference in the humidity ratio. So hopefully I've made a big enough deal out of it that, that this kind of makes sense and will seem worthy of memorizing at this point. And then in terms of actually applying it, we have the volume flow rate of air, in this case, the 2,500 CFM. We're gonna divide that by the specific volume. Why do we do that? Let's just do a reminder on that. The mass flow rate is equal to the density times the volume flow rate, or to say the same thing another way, you could say the volume flow rate over the specific volume. So that's why we're dividing the volume flow rate by the specific volume. I didn't look these numbers up, but specific volume is going to have units of cubic feet per pound. Pound of what? Pound of dry air times the humidity ratio delta, which again has these units here. And when you cancel out the cubic feet, cancel out the pounds of dry air, you're gonna end up with pounds of water per minute. 
and then we can convert pounds of water to um, gallons. About uh, 8.3 pounds per gallon. The way I remember that is a, a pint weighs about a pound. So there's eight pints in a gallon. So it's about eight pounds. I don't know why, random things like that. That, that's a that's kind of a general comment too. There's loads of conversion factors that you probably come across in your travels. And just like formulas, I don't necessarily recommend memorizing conversion factors because you can just look them up, but they do make you faster. And I think that helps to build confidence when you have ways. So if you find that there's certain things you're looking up over and over again, it may be worth just, you know, finding a way to, uh, to commit some of those to memory. But I mean, Again, I think just sufficient repetition, you'll find that the memories start to form.